Well, hello there, YouTube. We're finally going to install something on this 560SL. You know, things are upside down around here with the engine being out, but we still need to get some videos out there and we need to start installing something. Otherwise, you're going to get depressed just tearing stuff apart and finding new rabbit holes to follow. So, you know, we pulled out the power steering gearbox, and so it's time to install the power steering gearbox. Um, I'll put a link right above here to that and also in the description. Um, we already pulled the power steering box, so if you've been following that, if you did, did everything as I instructed, or not instructed, but how I did it in the last video, then you'll be ready to go in this video. Um, in that last video, when I took it out, I was planning on just, you know, installing it. So, um, I had already videoed the uh, process of getting to us to this point where we are today. It, it wasn't uploaded, you know, because obviously we didn't install it. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut to that. And, and then uh, show you the process of putting together the pin and centering the gearbox and getting that all ready for the installation. And then I'm going to join you all back and, uh, and we'll get into the actual installation of it. All right? So here we go. And we'll go ahead and watch that. All right. So now you have your steering gearbox out of the car. Thanks for watching. No. I'm not going to do that to you. We're going to put this other one in. Okay? So that's where this starts. All right. So now that you've got your uh, old one out, now you really better, if you didn't already, you need to inspect your steering coupling. If you'll notice, do you see that? That's not, that is not how that's supposed to be, okay? All right, so this one here was worn. It's just worn out, okay? So I had bought one of those. I bought the original Mercedes, okay? Now this, this gearbox has a lot of play, I tell you, and clunks and everything. So I'm glad we're getting rid of that one, and we're putting in a brand new rebuilt one okay now what they don't tell you is this is what this is what you get okay this gearbox not the coupling you get the gearbox all right now you're gonna have to return your old gearbox but you're not gonna give them a couple of things you know keep your coupling of course you want to keep your coupling or throw it out if that's what you're gonna do that's pretty much what I'm gonna do that can come right off okay you don't have to worry about that but you're gonna have to take off these that's because the new gearbox just has these plugs which you're going to be taking out. Okay? That's all they give you. So, and, right, that's the reason why we bought these copper seal rings ahead of time. Alright? And that's why we bought this nut because this is a one time use nut. Okay, and then we need to take these out. And then you need to put those in the other one to the proper torque specifications. So I'm going to take these out and then I'm going to clean them up. And then we'll come back to the next part. See that copper washer right there? That's the reason why. That's a one-time use. Do you see how crushed that is? It'll leak if you if you just take this and put it over into the other one. You know, I don't know. So you have to have that. Yes, there's one on, on both of them. Right? That's the reason why you need all these things. Yeah, you need one more. That's because, you see this one? We're going to be using this one in a minute. And that also is a, cross, a crush washer. But we're going to do that on the new one, which they've already crushed. So... But we'll talk about how all that works in a minute. But So I'm going to clean these things up and then just go ahead and put them in. So I want, want you to see that you see there's a bevel on the inside of the one. 
and the other side there is no bevel in that. Okay, so, gosh, I don't know how, it's reverse for me, I'm sorry guys. Right? So you see that? Do you see the difference? Alright, that's because this is the side, the one without the bevel, is the side where we put our copper rim. Remember for that, that's for that, that bigger one. So, again, just put it on the, on the outside, like that. And then go and ahead then and install it. Side. That side. Okay. But this is the time when we're going to make that special tool. The special tool I'm talking about, okay, this is that one that uh, we talked about earlier. So uh, let's explain, I'll give you some close-ups on how this is actually used, okay? All right, so before we install our new steering gearbox, let's work with our old one. The next thing we need to do is we need to create, is make that centering pin and what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to find the center of where this gearbox is in other words your wheels are pointing straight right and you're at the 180 position so in other words let's pretend that this thing can turn I've seen guys do it by manually by hand but every, every uh, pretty much I think for the most part, Mercedes puts this little plug right here, okay? We're going to look inside that plug. This plug is just a 12 millimeter, okay? And this is why you need that other little crush ring. All right, there's your, your crush ring. All right, we'll set that aside. This is a fine thread, okay? Uh, in, in the description, I ex tell you what you need to make this, okay? Now, it's tapered on the end because I'm hoping that we can see what happens here. So, you put, a, put, your, put your old coupling on the end of the shaft, and then if you look in there, do you see that? Do you see that thing turning in there? That's got like a little divot, but then it's not, right? There's that divot. I'll try to get as much light on it as I can. Right, so I'm, I turned it all the way one direction. Now I'm coming back and boom, do you see that divot? Do you see it? And now it's going past that to the other side, right? And then right here, here it comes, there, right there. Do you see that? All right. That's why we made this, if I can put it in there. Let's see, here it is. Because the end of this is going to fit in that little divot. All right? That's what you need to make your tool to do. And when you do that, Okay, like I'll go ahead and I'll kind of see where it is about right there and then put your, your bolt in. Back this up just a tad here. You know, once, once you feel that you've got what, you know, this the taper just right it's it's just a feel right it's just a feel now I'm, all I'm doing is just cinching it up now the reason why I'm using my old gearbox is because I don't want to I don't want to practice making my my centering pin on the new gearbox I want to make sure I've got it all perfect for the old gearbox it's not that difficult to do and then once you do you'll see in here as I back up it's locked in position. So now we've we've center locked our 
gearbox. All right, so that's that's the top dead center of our gearbox. Now you can see I got a lot of play here. That's because this gearbox is shot. Okay. So that's all we're going to do now with our new gearbox is just once we've got this made. Now we're going to go ahead and take it off on the on the uh, take this little nut off on the new gearbox and put our centering pin in there and then we'll take it under the car. Wait, 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 wait. There's one more thing I want to mention. I miraculously have 21 subscribers right now. Somebody's wanting to watch my crazy videos. Oh. So either you've, you're in your own rabbit hole or you're just going to follow my rabbit hole or you just want to see me fail. I don't know what it is. But 21 subscribers, that's great. You know, I wanted, to, I wanted to do that. So to you 21 subscribers, let me tell you what's going on. After we put in that steering gearbox, um, what's coming up, I, I, the reason why this engine is upside down like this is because I, I've been, I cleaned it. I kind of went through it you know, as far as, you know, visual inspection to see what I was needing. Um, I decided that uh, we're going to go ahead and do a front seal leak, a front seal as well. Not that it was leaking, but there is, you'll see once I get ready to show you what's going on with that one. But there's a, there's a lot of indications that tell me I better just go ahead and change that as well. It's out. So let's tear into it, right? We're going to go ahead and, I don't know how far that's going to go. but. Let's go ahead and get this steer box, this gearbox installed, all right? All right, before we get started, we should lay out the tools that we need to use. Uh, we have our new Pitman arm nut, which is this here, right? And you've got your new seal ring for your cap that goes on top where you do your centering. Um, I'm retaining my old nut. You should probably do the same thing. Um, you should refresh your lock washers on these. You're going to need a 12 millimeter and a 15 miller, millimeter open end. Um, I just have a 3 8 ratchet. There's the bolts for the side to bolt our gearbox to the side frame. That's also a 15 millimeter socket. You're going to need a torque wrench. This is the torque wrench. I'm going to use a 3 8 torque wrench. This one here only goes to 100 foot pounds or 135 nanometers, newton meters. <laughs> I say nanometers. Um, that'll take care of the side. But then we have our pitman arm, which is what, that 32 inch socket? Is that what that is? I think we already discussed it, but uh, 36 inch socket. Um, I have it on a half inch racket because we've got to get that to 118 uh, foot pounds or let's see what we got here. That one there would be 160 to 200 newton meters. And so I have my older click style for that because it goes to 150 or 160 pounds which is a lot more than what we need so and then you need your gearbox you should already have your centering pin we've already discussed how to make that and how to center your gearbox so it should be all centered this pin is going to keep it from going anywhere i have a new uh, coupling and i put this in here because it's going to be tight usually because it's brand new and that just opens it up for me to slide this on and i'll show you i've done this so many times that I consider myself an expert at installing and removing uh, a power steering gearbox. Um, I have done it many, many different ways, and I think that the way that I do it is probably the easiest way. Um, here's a, a little note. Here's your high and low pressure that we talked about. We installed on the on this new pump. We took from the old pump. Um, there's no torque setting really for this, but there is torque setting for the the actual hose line. So what I do is I just take that torque setting, the high end of that torque setting, and then give this a little bit more of a turn because I don't want these things to spin out when I when I use them. It was really difficult. So I know it can handle that torque because that's 
what it's rated at. So that's how I do it. And uh, all right, well, let's get underneath the car. One last thing before I put this under the car is I, I'm putting this on cardboard, right? I doubled this cardboard, and that just allows me to slide that underneath the car nice and easy, right, without scratching it all up, right? That's a brand new pump. We want it to look just as good when we install it as it did before we installed it. With the engine and the transmission out of the car, this is what it looks like. Right, so we're going to be installing our gearbox onto these bolt holes right there, those holes right there, right? And there's our coupling, that's our steering shaft. You notice it's colored yellow on the top? That's an indicator that it is centered to the top. You can install it, you see it's just a square, so you can install it on either side. You'll, you'll see in a minute. Alright, so I replaced this grommet and that hose, you remember in the last video, it was a aftermarket hose that did not fit properly. This now fits perfectly. Okay? Alright, and then I also replace all of those rubber bushings that you see. Now here's a little trick. Those other ones just dissolve basically when fuel and oil and stuff like that get to it. So all you do is get a 5 16 fuel line and then cut it to the size you want. Okay, 5 16 and then you sp split it and it fits perfectly over that line. You can use that throughout the car. I would use that rather than the actual stuff that's used. It's better, it looks the same, but provides a lot better protection. Alright, so now we're going to get back underneath that car and actually get this job done. Alright, so that's where our steering coupler needs to go. And I'm telling you, this job is easier under the car even when the engine is out. It just plain at is that easy. Um, so this has got a flat edge to it right here right but it's also got a flat edge on the other side so that's why you got to get it straight and I also want to say that even though you have it tied down and locked steering wheel the lock the steering wheel is actually locked right now but I want to have Jen my wife go ahead and just turn just move the wheel a little bit back and forth and you can see the steering wheel is locked but you can also see that that thing moves so it's a good idea to have a second set of hands. Now I've done this several times and I didn't have a second set of hands, so it's possible. All right, so I've got my coupler with just opening this up so we can get to it. These are your threaded holes right here. So just make sure your threaded holes are down and the spline is towards you. The space slide it on all the way up as far as you can go pull that out and now she's all the way up on the shaft and hopefully it stays on the shaft then the next thing you want to do is just go ahead and grab one of your your bolts here now the bolt I grab you got one long bolt right you got a one long bolt and then one and two shorter bolts I'm going to grab one of the, the longer bolt goes in this hole over here. All right, but I'm going to grab, to begin with, I'm just going to grab this little one because it's got a little taper on the end. It's just, it's going to help us with installing this, actually. Um, and I'm going to use this bottom hole to begin with. Um, I should mention, I put this back on because I want to show you that I replaced that. And so, now i got to tell you, you don't want that on there. Yeah, we, we want to loosen this because of my technique. We uh, And actually, we had this already loosened. Um, I just put this in here to make sure everything worked, my new parts. And now I'm just wasting your time and my time and everybody's time. So this is all going to get cut out. So I just removed our top hose. 
Um, and that just allows us, because all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this box in back here. And this is a flat surface, and the other side that's going to mount to that is a flat surface. So all you have to do is pull it all the way back. You already knew it came out with the coupling, so you know the two can fit. So you're going to go all the way as far this way as you can, lay it flat, and then just push it into the spline. And your hole will just line right up. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. But it really is just this simple. Is holding it back against this wall and flat like that. That's it. And then push it into the spline. It's going to be a little tight, but that's it. And you just saw how easy I just put that in there. And this will go in eventually here. Gotta remember all my stuff is new, so it's tight on the spline, but we are we are lined up. All we gotta do is get it in the hole. There it is. So that's that. We can just give it a little bit of a snug with our 15 millimeter. Or not snug, but at least bring it up. You know, people want to mark this, and this, I don't know, I forgot how many different splines are on there, but there's a lot. This has the extra room on the back to line up as long as you've squared it up. I have yet had this fail. I'm going to put in my top bolt. Now I clean those bolts ahead of time because you're going to be torquing them down. Whenever you, whenever the specs require a torque, always make sure that the, the hole that you're going to be putting the bolts in are clear and clean and that your bolts are clear and clean. Otherwise, you're going to be torquing against the dirt or whatever, and you'll get improper torques. So, at this moment, I'm not torquing. All I'm doing is just getting everything in place. Okay. Okay. So, now, since you've had your pin in, right, everything should be lined up. How's your steering wheel, Jen? Okay. Perfect. I'd like to hear that. Okay, so now, there is one very important step that we should do right now. You know, we're, we're going to, we want to set this. But I have really got to show you something that's super important because you've got a lot of room on that shaft that that bolt can go into really and we want to make sure that our coupling right here is got our full threads our spline is on here and you can look in there and see the little gap where that needs to go so you need to either pry this with a pry bar or whatever to make sure you got that spline all the way up and we can take a picture from the top and we can probably see that a little bit better but before you put those bolts in and tighten them down you want to make sure that you're fully on here I've heard of people not getting that on there and still being able to put the bolts in and there's a serious problem that happens when that thing comes off okay so now um, let's go to the next step now that we've got it all slid up there We'll talk more about that in a minute because we want to make sure that we get that coupling all the way on that spline of the gearbox, right, and lock it in. We want as much teeth on the spline as possible, okay? That is 
all our steering is right there so we need to make sure that's good and locked in and we'll then we'll put in our our lock washers and everything okay and then before we put on our pitman arm and then there's that little that little uh, indicator for us we need to take out our centering pin all right so that's what I'm gonna do Ugh. all right there's my pin now we'll put in our our newly uh, got our new washer on there and our cap and we snug that down with a 12 millimeter that's all there is to it okay now that's not going to leak nothing should leak now now we can grab that pitman arm um, we're going to go ahead and line up our pitman arm mark on that mark. And that's really, is, that's as simple as that. Alright, so, there's our mark. And, there's our mark. So we got to line those two up. It's that simple, really. It just, just line them up. Alright, I can't. The camera, I had the camera right there, but it's probably lined up. No, nope, I don't know. Let's see if I can do this and look at the camera at the same time. That's it. Do you see? So we are now lined up. Okay, so now that we've got these lined up. Right, our marks are all lined up. We can use our. I, what I do is I take my old, my old nut first, and I'll put that on there. Okay. Then uh, just snug it up. Is all now. I want to mention that I am not going to snug mine all the way up. I just have it on the pitman arm, and the reason for that is because I have my engine out and my transmission out, and this whole area, as you can see, is just an open cavity, and I would prefer that I drop my pitman arm and this arm and swing them all the way towards the front of the car so that way there I can just bring the transmission right through right through there without any interference of this getting in my way so for the purpose of this video though you would go ahead and uh, still use the old nut that's what I prefer to do to begin with is I use the the old nut just kind of snug everything up not to the torque setting below that torque setting okay you can even use your torque wrench that's fine but I want to be below that torque setting and then I want to make sure that we get this coupling so we, we get the full thread of our coupling on there and then we put those locks in and we will um, hook up our hose lines set them to the torque specifications not really that necessary just snug them in right you just gotta make sure they don't leak um, and uh, clamp everything down and let's go take a look I'm gonna go ahead and get this on I'll show you you can see right now that is not fully on the shaft that needs to be slid up a little bit alright so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll take a look at it when it's done I'm just gonna use a, a pry bar just anything just kinda help me that is now fully on the shaft now I don't know if this is I would guess this is actually the real Mercedes but this one here has a shoulder on it all right so that'll come from the top that'll go on the top bolt hole 
that's can fit now in that slot, right? Okay, there's that one. And then in my case, the other side was fully threaded. And with the lock washer, there we go. All right, so that's now snugged in there. Now, we'll tighten these up in a minute. Still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go ahead and torque this yet. I would go ahead and make sure that our pump doesn't leak. We don't know. You know, you just bought the pump, right? So you don't know. Maybe they did something wrong or got hurt in shipping or whatever. Well, we want to just leave this old nut on to begin with. We'll get everything all snugged up. Um, you can go ahead and torque your uh, mounting bolts if you want. Um, that would be a good time to possibly do that so that way there at least you're all locked in. And uh, now let's go up to the top. And we're going to come into the fender well here and tighten these to 70 to 80, 80 newton meters. I have mine set to 70 because I can always go past. I'm not going to tighten all of them all at once. I'm just going to kind of bring them to a, about 35 to 40 pounds. There we go. And then I'll increase it. I don't want to just tighten one at once. Don't call for anything special like this, but that's how I do it. And here we can start clamping now. All right, set it 70. There we go. Perfect. So now we're at the top of the vehicle and we're looking down, kind of nice not having an engine in there. You're probably going to say, oh Tony, you know that was really easy because you had your engine out. It really is just as easy. It truly is just as easy. Going in is a piece of cake. Coming out was the, is always tougher. These are loose at this point and I'm just using the same method that I used in the, in the first video on removing your gearbox, the same method, um, but this is six millimeter and I'm just using my finger, I'm finger tightening this, I'm not using a, a wrench, and then we'll torque it to 25 newton meters, I just wanted to hand tighten this, okay, let's go ahead and turn on my torque wrench, I already have it preset to 25 newton. So now the next step is to install the high pressure line. Now we took that off in the previous video when we removed this power steering gearbox. Now don't attach it to the firewall first. Attach it to this first. It's a lot easier to line up and it still won't be easy. So I'm not going to spend the money, obviously, on another special tool, but you just snug those up there, you just don't want them to leak, that's the, the main thing, and then you'll, and then we can clamp 
our hose back in where it belongs. Do the same thing to this side. millimeter same thing you can feel when it seats you don't need to buy special tools for this okay so now our steering gear box is all in now the next thing you have to do is fill your power steering gear box let's cut to that all right so you haven't tightened up your pitman arm yet just because you don't want to waste the nut. That's the only reason why. But now you're on the top of your car. I know I know this doesn't look like the top of my car. But for this video it is. So this is the top of my car and our hoses are connected and they're all connected now to this power steering gearbox that we just installed. So now it's time to fill our reservoir. This this is where it's really important when we start to fill uh, fill our pump. I'll have the specifics on just how much fluid goes in here in the description and I'll display it right here um, but the first thing you need to do is depending on whether you're using oil or ATF remember I said I wouldn't change necessarily what was in it the pump has thoroughly been cleaned and can accept either but this, I mean, unless you thoroughly clean it and you want to change over, that's fine. I used oil. I used the transmission oil. Um, but here's where things get interesting. What you need to do, this is super, super important. Right now your pump is dry. Even though, well, actually, your pump is dry and so is your power steering gear box. Your lines are even dry, right? They're basically dry. So what we have to do is bleed the system. And this is a lot different than like bleeding brakes. You have no one to pump, but we do have a way of pumping. So that's what we're going to do. Um, what we're going to do is go ahead and put fluid in here, bring it right up to the, to the line. No problem, because we know a lot of it's going to end up down in that pump. So what we're going to do is you're going to do that, and you'll see it bubbling, and it will start coming up. For this purpose, I can't do it because I don't have everything installed yet. But you get the idea. If you haven't put power steering fluid in your power steering box ever, then <laughs> why are you changing it? <laughs> all right, look. So we're going to fill this, and the bubbles are all going to come up. Now, to, to help that, you can get a helper, or I would probably get a helper, or get a video camera, some way that you can see what's going on. Because what's going to happen is someone's going to go to the, your, your car is still jacked up, so your wheels are off the ground. The power steering isn't going to work because the car isn't going to be running. We're not going to start the car. We're going to fill this up, and we're not going to start the car. We're going to get into the driver's seat, and we're going to turn the wheel all the way to the right, and then we're going to turn it all the way to the left. We're just going to keep doing that over and over and over, and as you start doing that, you're going to see this thing bubbling because you're what we're doing is we're pumping the system. It, you could even turn this if you wanted to, but that would be a good way to, to do it. You want to get that the gearbox itself lubricated, get all the air out of the actual gearbox. Because you're already putting oil down, so gravity will fill, fill it, but you need to move things around to push those air bubbles up. So that's all you do is turn the wheel to the left, and turn the wheel to the right and just keep doing that over and over and then we keep refilling it keep refilling it and go back and forth and once you feel it's been fully done I would probably still leave the wheels off the ground right no sense in putting any pressure on anything right now at this point but once you feel that you've, you've torqued all your your bolts everything is sealed you've you've done this step that we're talking about here and you don't see any leaks and everything's cool then I'd say we're in pretty good shape at this point. So what we want to do now is we can actually start the engine with the car jacked up in the front, it's just fine, and exercise that gearbox. 
And as you do, more of that is going to go through. And you'll, you may even hear it actually start to quiet down um, as you're doing that turning. If you've ever ran low on power steering fluid, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you can kind of feel that. So, and hear it. So just go ahead and do that. And once you're completely satisfied and that you have all the air bubbles out, and you have no air leaks or anything, and there's no other leaks, I would say go ahead and tighten up that pitman arm. And you're good to go. And go ahead and drive around the block a few times. And then I would send my gearbox, old gearbox in, and get my deposit back. So that is how you install a power steering gearbox on an R107. I'm telling you, they're all the same. There's so many Mercedes that use the same method. And that's the easiest way, is just to take that gearbox and push it right up against that fender well and slide it into place. It works every single time. I'm, I guarantee you, once you put your wheels on and you set her down, your wheels are going to be running perfectly true. Guaranteed. Thank you, YouTube.